When I first started calisthenics, I made some silly mistakes. And so in today's video, I'm gonna cover five things I wish I knew before starting calisthenics, so you do not have to make the exact same mistakes I had to. So let's get into it, shall we? What is going on my friends, this is Jake of www.jgcalisthenics.co.uk and for the best guidance for starting calisthenics, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and turn on post notifications because I upload new videos every Monday and Thursday specifically for people like you my friend. Right, so the first thing I wish I knew when I first began my fitness and, sorry not fitness, but calisthenics journey is knowing that everything comes down to the principles, right? And the principles are really the only things that actually work, do you see what I mean? Because really, with calisthenics and bodyweight training, despite of how long it's been about, we always think that because it's a unique style of training and a unique style of resistance that we don't typically see in the fitness industry as a whole, we think that we got to approach it completely differently, right? So it's almost like we've got to do high rep and circuit workouts and fat burning workouts and all these different types of workouts rather than sticking to the principles of strength building exercises so we can actually build bigger and stronger muscles, you see what I mean? Because really at the end of the day, our body does not know the difference between the resistance that would come from exerting force against gravity with a barbell or our own body weight, right? Because again, resistance is resistance. Our body can't tell the difference. And progressive overload is progressive overload, right? And as progressive overload is the number one driver to strength and muscle gains by gradually increasing the intensity we place on our muscles over time. If we use weights, right, it's very simple. We pick a rep range based on our goal. So let's say if we were to bench press X amount of weight for six to eight reps, we may start with a weight where we do three sets of six. So each workout we'd focus on increasing reps to the point where let's say we get to three sets of eight, but from here, we wouldn't do what we maybe think with calisthenics body training of just adding reps, adding reps to the point we get to 15, 20 plus, right? We increase the intensity by adding more weight. So, you know, although the reps may go down, the intensity is increasing. So we simply repeat that cycle over and over again. Do you see what I mean? And so with calisthenics body weight training, really the thing I wish I knew is really to maximize your results and strength and muscle gains with calisthenics to do the exact same. And so instead of adding weight, we manipulate our body weight through space by decreasing leverage by working up to harder and harder bodyweight exercises. Does that make sense? Now the second thing I wish I knew before I started calisthenics is really understanding that not all exercises are equal, right? Because if we're working towards certain strength and bodyweight skill progressions, right? If you were to pick five random exercises for one specific bodyweight goal, each exercise is going to get you a different result, right? And so the thing that most people do, which I personally made myself, is we'll do every single exercise and progression we can think towards a specific exercise goal because we have what's known as FOMO the fear of missing out, right? So as an example, when I learned the handstand at the start of the year, right, I was told to do as much as I could, right? So I would train handstands every day. I would do as many freestanding handstand attempts I could do for like 20, 30 minutes. I would spend another 20 minutes doing every single body line drill I could do because that's what was apparently essential for the core stability and alignment for the handstand, right? And but really, as weeks went by, I realized I wasn't making much progress. So do you know what I did instead? Instead of focusing on, let's say, half a dozen exercises at once to progress to the handstand, I said, okay, right, I'm gonna practice freestanding handstands against the wall, and I'm gonna supplement that with chest of all handstands, right? So if you think, I drastically reduced the workload and the number of exercises as I did, but as a result, I made way more progress and actually achieved the handstand as a result of that. And so as you can see, instead of doing half a dozen plus exercises for handstand, I literally had just two primary exercises, which is far fewer, but I made way more progress as a result. And so do you know what that indicates, my friend? Not all exercises are equal. Now the third thing I wish I knew, which kind of carries over to point number two, is knowing that more is not always better, right? Because let me ask you a question, right? Out of two people, person A and person B, right? Who do you think is gonna make more progress? Person A is someone who works out just three times a week, 45 minutes each session, but they have a clear plan, a clear strategy and clear guidance to progress each and every workout, right? They got the nutrition, they got the recovery, they got everything on point, right? Or person B, who's working out six days a week, two hours plus, but they got no idea what they're doing, the nutrition's whack, and their recovery isn't really in check. So they're actually not making any progress. Well, if you said person A, you are correct, my friend. Because when I first began my Castex journey, I was doing full body workouts, hit workouts, I was even playing football, or for my Americans, soccer. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry for that. 
And so I was actually exercising almost every day for one hour minimum, right? But it got to a point after several weeks that I was spinning my wheels. I wasn't actually getting anywhere. I was putting in so much work, but I was a little bit like that hamster on the wheel, right? Where you're actually running so fast, but you're not actually getting anywhere. And I'm telling you, my friend, you do not want to be that hamster that's put in so much work and actually getting, <laughs> getting no results in return. Whereas now with my coach, I'm working out just like three times a week intensely with each session being about 45 to 60 minutes each. I go for brisk walks with my dog as I walk my dog and every now and then I'll do some general jump rope. And so as you can compare the two of before and now, the amount of time I actually dedicate to my calisthenics and my fitness as a whole has actually gone down a lot but my gains have increased substantially. And so really with the right guidance and strategy, everything falls into play very quickly. Do you see what I mean? And also comment down below what I'd love to know is what is one thing you wish you knew before starting calisthenics? Comment down below, I'd love to know. Now the fourth thing I wish I knew before starting calisthenics, which may be considered controversial, is that abs, it really isn't that important, right? I remember when I first began my fitness journey, not fitness journey, calisthenics journey, right? And I was told that, yo, Jake, if you wanna get super strong with calisthenics, you have got to train your core every single day. I'm talking, you gotta do X, Y, and Z, you gotta do hollow body, five sets of 60 seconds as a minimum requirement before you move on to, you know, the planche and the front lever. You gotta train your abs, you gotta do 20 minute ab workouts three times a week. And basically, if you don't do this, Jake, you're gonna be considered irrelevant in the calisthenics community. But shortly after I came to the realization that from my past experience before discovering calisthenics with my fitness journey of that, you know, doing poncy fancy ab workouts really did not produce the best results for your time invested into that ab training, right? I always knew that, you know, abs are like any other muscle, right? If you want to grow stronger over time, you've got to progressively overload the exercise you're doing for that muscle group so it grows stronger over time. Do you see I mean? Again, the law of progressive overload. And so really, if I'm being told to do more exercises with less time and do all these circuit trainings and do that more frequently, that's literally doing the complete opposite of what I actually need to do to get stronger as all of those factors inhibit the amount of strength I can actually gain from those exercises. So you know what I did? I did the complete opposite. I know, what a rebel, right? So really I started out with doing just like one to two core exercises a couple of times a week. And then as I got stronger and got to the more advanced elements of um, core exercise with calisthenics and progressing on to things like, you know, the planche and the front lever as an example, I realized that these progressions actually require a ton of core stability in the first place. And so as my coach told me, he said, Jake, you don't really need to be doing any ab work. As of the date of this recording, I probably have not actually trained my abs directly in about six months and really they're actually stronger than ever. So yes, core strength is important, but ultimately when you focus on what's most important, the core strength and the visibility of your abs will naturally take care of itself over time. Do you see what I mean? Now the fifth and last thing I wish I knew before calisthenics is understanding that nothing is impossible. Because I remember when, you know, I used to go to the gym and doing all these weights and then I discovered calisthenics, I was looking at all these feats of strength, I was like, whoa. I even struggled to actually pitch myself doing them in my head, let alone actually think of doing them later on the road in real life, right? But really, you know, if you change your words, you change your world, you know, going from I can't to saying, you know, how can I actually do that? Instantly, you're just gonna reprogram your brain to think in and actually approach your training differently to get to the goal you desire within your calisthenics journey. Because really, as I've learned from experience and ultimately getting the right guidance over time, when you are patient and consistent and make progress over time, you'll be astonished with the amount of progress you'll make and what you can actually really achieve with your own body weight through space. And so over time, your word of, you know, that is impossible will change to, you know, putting that separation between the I and the M to then saying, I'm possible. Do you see what I mean? Because really at the end of the day, my friend, whatever goals you want to achieve in your calisthenics journey, it's completely possible, regardless of your age, genetics, anything. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. Do you see what I mean? And so as like I said, if you would like specific guidance and support with your own health and fitness, so you can build that lean, muscular, and defined body that you've always wanted. Without having to go to an overcrowded gym if you don't want to, then you can actually apply now for a free coaching call to see if we'd be a great fit together and join my 12-week program, online coaching program that is the Bodyweight Transformation Blueprint, which is the exact system I use to personally transform the body and lives of dozens of people across the globe. And so if you'd like to be in the next transformation and see if this is something you'd actually like to commit to, then you can click the link in the description or I'll maybe link up something right up here. So apply for a free coaching call and 
and you know, let me know what motivates you, what excites you. And you know, if we both feel like we're a great fit together, then we can talk more about the coaching itself. Does that make sense? And so like I said, if you enjoyed this video, you like my content, you enjoyed watching every single minute, every single second of this video, then make sure to give this video a cheeky thumbs up and comment down below what you found most valuable within this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, share this with a friend or friends you believe would benefit from these guys. And as that is enough for me today, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, my friend. And as a crew member of the Game Tour Express, keep moving forward. I'll see you next time. <laughs>